Dogs look up to us. Cats look down on us. But pigs look us in the eyes and see us as equals. Winston Churchill. Perhaps no other domesticated animal is more reviled than the pig. A symbol of gluttony, excess, impulse, and filth. Just listen to them. Great for meditation, right? But perhaps the negative reputation the pig has acquired is undeserved. They have continued to be an important source of food for cultures around much of the world, with some significant exceptions. And they're also fairly social and intelligent creatures. Perhaps the most intelligent domesticated animal of all. This even-toed, hoofed creature is not so much a species, but rather a domesticated subspecies of the wild boar, an omnivorous animal native to the temperate regions of the Eurasian landmass, across nearly all of Europe, parts of the Middle East and North Africa, the Indian subcontinent, and most of East Asia, aside from regions like Tibet and the frigid portions of Siberia. They're an invasive species in many other regions, such as the southern United States, as well as the southern cone of South America and northern Australia. Such a massive range of both native and invasive feral populations speaks to an incredible ability to adapt across a wide range of climates, biomes, food sources, and human pressures. People may use the word pig to insult those who are fat, rude, and gross, but if anything, it should describe those who are adaptive and resilient. Boars and pigs alike are some of the best contenders in evolution, up there with sharks, cats, and ants. While pigs have a reputation for being lazy fat asses, boars are anything but. Boars are not to be played with in the wild, as they're fast, their bite force hurts, more than you'd think, and they've even been known to kill people with their tusks. Granted, this is fairly rare. They're also a social animal, known to form cooperative bonds, and are roughly more intelligent than dogs, and can be trained. However, they're not as smart as, say, dolphins and apes and probably not as much as, say, parrots or octopuses either. However, I would argue that what makes the pig so powerful as an evolutionary player, as well as its domesticated counterpart, is oftentimes what makes them so repulsive to us. Their eating habits. While goats will eat the fresh hay and leaves, pigs will eat just about anything organic. A garbage dump is a buffet to the point when there are literal buffets that send their food wastes to pig farms to put the scraps to use. Pig pens today are oftentimes made as metal, as pigs are known to eat wood. Yeah, they make dogs, which eat their own vomit, look rather civilized. There are even instances when pigs have been used to eat human feces. Some of that human shit probably came from eating pork in the first place. It all comes full circle. Now that I've disgusted you enough, it's worth pointing out that this very idea of disgust and the very high tolerance for disgust that pigs have probably means that despite having a similar immune system to us, their bodies are able to deal with toxins better than our bodies are. Disgust, after all, is an evolutionary mechanism to keep us safe from toxins. Pigs, however, can store toxins in their fat to the point when some can even eat venomous and poisonous prey. This flexible and undiscriminatory diet allows pigs to adapt to a wide variety of places, as nearly anything can be a food source. This combined with a keen sense of smell, along with their snouts, which are used for both sniffing and digging to eat all the tubers and roots, ends up being very useful. Digging is also helpful as they don't have sweat glands and need to dig up mud to cool down. This walling behavior may also act as sunscreen and a way of driving away insects. Granted, the wallowing behavior and their diets have contributed to pigs being seen as dirty, given that, well, wallowing around in the dirt is, well, dirty. Granted, it's mostly our fault as their natural environment would usually be in the forest, with trees that provide shade for them. Food and shelter is not the only thing pigs are, well, piggish about. Sex is another, as they breed very easily, and are about as non-discriminatory as getting laid as they are with their dinner. They're ready to breed within half a year, and the sows are pregnant for about four months, 
This amounts to 2 to 3 litters per year, and each litter has around 10 piglets. Despite being associated with temperate regions around the world, the wild boar traces its origins to Southeast Asia, and through its aforementioned ecological advantages, it was able to migrate and take over a wide variety of ecosystems. They would eventually cross paths with another globe-trotting species, the human. You might have heard of them. The first complex civilizations emerged in the Middle East, which is where pigs were first domesticated. It is rather amusing that the Middle East is now the region with the lowest pork consumption due to Islam and Judaism. There are remains of pigs dating back over 10,000 years ago in Greece, and around 8,000 years ago in China. From that point on, it would be Europe and East Asia that would be the biggest consumers of pork. The pigs of Europe most likely were brought by traders from the Middle East and later bred with European wild populations, while the ones in China were domesticated separately a little bit later on. As boars transitioned into domesticated pigs, populations would become less aggressive, fatter, have floppier ears, shorter snouts, and rather pathetic tusks that would eventually fade away. Despite being such a reliable food source and easy to domesticate, some cultures would eventually make eating pigs forbidden. One indicator that archaeologists have used to set the emergence of Jewish identity separate from various other Canaanite groups mentioned in the Bible was the lacking of pig remains at a certain point in the archaeological record. At other points of the archaeological record, Canaanite peoples in the region of what are now Syria and Lebanon, long before Islam, abandoned the consumption of pigs. This makes it a rather unusual way to discuss when or when not the Jewish identity first emerged given that so many Semitic peoples in the Middle East just started to abandon eating pork. In Judaism, pork is prohibited as pigs do not chew chud. Chewing chud is what cows do. They quasi-regurgitate their food and re-chew it to digest the tough cellulose from the grass. Pigs, unlike cows, only have one stomach, so they don't do that. This sounds rather arbitrary, but I'm not going to question the Old Testament God because he has a bad temper and I'm not fond of getting killed. The pork taboo would not gain significant traction among Christians, despite Christianity starting off as an offshoot of Judaism. St. Paul, a Jew that was rather Hellenized by Greek influence and was far more worldly than your typical Jew, made Christianity more universal. And he did this by appealing to non-Jews by reducing some of the esoteric restrictions on diets, along with other Jewish customs that non-Jews oftentimes found unappealing, such as, say, not eating pork and making circumcision mandatory. Most people like to keep their bacon and their foreskin. And that is the only time when you will hear those two words together in the same sentence. However, there are some branches like the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which prohibit pork, as they adopted Christianity before the Romans did, and stuck to many Jewish customs. The most prominent Western branch to prohibit pork are the Protestant Seventh-day Adventists, who subscribe to Jewish kosher food laws. However, it would be the rise of Islam, which would place a damper on pork consumption more than any other faith. Quote, I do not find in what has been revealed to me anything forbidden for anyone who wants to eat unless it is carrion, outpoured blood, and the flesh of swine, all of which are unclean. This was a passage from the Quran. The most obvious reason for this is that pigs are well considered unclean. There are some Jewish roots in the Islamic perspective as both of them are Abrahamic religions, and many Bedouins believe themselves to be the descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's first son and Isaac's older brother, and thereby some Jewish customs were adopted by Muslims. To this day, pork consumption is very low in Muslim-majority countries, however, some Muslim-majority countries do produce pork for their Christian populations, like seen in Lebanon, or for the Chinese population in Indonesia. Some Muslim nations with large expat communities like the UAE will also have an enclosed section for pork in some jurisdictions. When I lived in Dubai, there would be signs at grocery stores hidden behind other shelves saying, pork for non-Muslims. Some Muslim populations in Eastern Europe, like the Albanians, are more likely to eat pork as they have become more secularized having lived under communism and are in close contact to Christian Slavic peoples who eat a great deal of pork. 
Hinduism in India, while not an Abrahamic religion, and not one that explicitly prohibits pork, like it does with beef, does not exactly praise the smoky bacon flavor either. Given that Hinduism has a strong emphasis on ritual purity, and the separation of the ethereal mystical world over the ugliness of the material world, an animal that wallows around in mud and eats garbage doesn't exactly bode well. On top of this, in early modern times, India was ruled by the Muslim Mughal Empire before the arrival of the British. These Muslim rulers did prohibit pork, and many of their Hindu subjects followed. To this day, pork is not widely consumed by Hindus in favor of chicken, lamb, or even more so a vegetarian diet, as Hinduism is less anthropomorphic as Abrahamic religions and more in tune with, say, animal welfare. There have also been various reasons anthropologists have given for why the pork taboo exists. The most obvious reason for this is that God told them so, and that pigs are gross and they are more likely to cause disease. Disgust, after all, is meant to keep you safe from things that can cause you disease. Before the scientific method, it would be totally reasonable to assume that pigs were more likely to get you sick given that their diets are pretty gross and their bathing habits are almost as gross. After all, most of the dietary restrictions would usually target other scavengers like crows, vultures, and the Bible's well-known ban on shrimp. The fact that there's a Wikipedia page for pig toilet, referring to a method of feeding, makes me realize why some people would pass on the baby back ribs. However, epidemiological studies show that pigs are not more likely to cause you to get sick. The two most deadly diseases for humans have been malaria from mosquitoes and smallpox from cattle. So scientifically, the target of pork doesn't really make any sense. To be fair, while cooked pork is not likely to get you more sick than any other form of cooked meat, uncooked pork is more likely to give you roundworms and tapeworms than, say, chicken or beef although it's probably roughly as likely as getting you sick as, say, very unfresh, uncooked fish. Others argue that the Semitic peoples eventually abandoned pork to distinguish themselves from other people groups who weren't Semitic. Again, it's very difficult to verify these claims. In more recent years, some people have made secular arguments against consuming pork through the high levels of intelligence and social abilities of pigs in contrast to those of cows, sheep, and chicken. While the Middle East, the birthplace of the domestic pig, is not a fan of their quasi-invention, other cultures have embraced the porkers, namely China and the West. To this day, the Chinese consume more pork than anyone else, and pigs have played a profound impact on their culture and cuisine, even becoming zodiac icons in the Chinese calendar. The myth tells a story of the Jade Emperor, who set up a race with 12 animals, including epic beasts like the dragon and the tiger, as well as the pig. Due to its laziness and gluttony, the pig took a snack break halfway through, and for that reason it ended up arriving 12 out of 12 being the last animal on the Zodiac. After the year of the pig, the cycle starts over, with the gold medalist, the year of the rat. Pork is more popular than beef in China due to them being easier to shelter, feed, and breed, and the fat is considered to be very appetizing. However, it would be the Europeans who would spread pork further throughout the world. Pork proved to be easy to cure, pickle, and smoke into ham, bacon, and chorizo, and other products, which was helpful for getting protein at a time before refrigeration and avoiding the sicknesses caused by rotting meat. To this day, pork is most commonly used for sausages, oftentimes using the intestines of the pig for casing, which is rather unappetizing, but you forget about that when you're eating bratwurst. Some varieties of sausages mix pork with beef and veal. Others, like the hot dog, mix pork with rat rectum, sodium nitrites, and mystery compost. To this day, pork meat is usually considered to be disproportionately eaten for breakfast, at least in the West. Europeans would eventually arrive in the Americas. The Spanish bought pigs with them, and they dropped them off on various islands. This is why there are swimming pigs in the Bahamas, as they could easily survive on their own and breed like rabbits, providing the Spanish with food later on. This, however, proved to be an ecological disaster today as 
pigs are known to destroy rooted plants and outcompete native species, not only in the southern United States most notably, but also in the southern cone of South America and northern Australia. The first tacos were invented when Cortes, the conqueror of the Aztec Empire, combined the pig pork that they took with them from the old world with the corn tortillas they got from the natives in the new world. To this day, pork remains one of the most popular sources of protein in most of Latin America. As the global economy industrialized and more people moved off of subsistence farming into the cities, large-scale commercial factory farms have opened up to produce pork on a massive scale at the cost of terrible living conditions for the pigs. Cramped enclosures, excess density, excessive use of antibiotics, contamination from their crap, and etc. have contributed to the controversy, especially given that these are animals with some fairly good degrees of social intelligence. However, there are also some areas where pig farming is more sustainable than others given that it oftentimes results in less food waste given that pigs will eat anything. However, the story of humanity's interaction with the pig is not just one of being consumed. Female pigs were used to forage for truffles, as truffles scent, or the scent of truffles, is more similar to that of the male pig. However, because pigs are, well, pigs, they tend to eat the expensive truffles, which is why dogs have, by and large, taken over this job. In China, they have also been used to fertilize fields. Throughout much of history, pigs and boars have been depicted in art. Boars were oftentimes seen as ferocious, while pigs, not so much. Tales like The Three Little Pigs, Charlotte's Web, and movies like Babe, Pig in the City presented pigs in a more positive light, and today some people have even ended up adopting pigs as pets. Perhaps this is a trend in the right direction. Pigs have unintentionally sacrificed their flesh and their lives for our consumption, and they've provided the calories needed to sustain various civilizations. Our domestication of them have made them one of the most successful species on the planet when it comes to their population quantity, but far, far, far less so when it comes to the quality of their lives. Perhaps we owe these creatures a little bit more respect.